Hello everybody, back to and here's Modi. We have a house full of guests. We have a uh, <laughs> <laughs> laugh is we on. have uh, Arthur Luxemburg back. Uh, we have Uri Schneider. S S am I saying it right? I accept all variations. Is it Uri Schneider? You got Schneider. It. Uri Schneider. We have Periel and me. We are on a high from. Uh, we just finished the two shows in Paramount. Periel did a hot five up front and slayed the house down boots. It was so. It was fun. so good. She wore her first outfit was rag and bone and it was gorgeous. And the second outfit was what? Um, it was a Jill Sander blazer and a Lafayette. And 148 pounds. The makeup feet. was amazing, and you looked great, and your husband's in the audience. And uh, you told me not to dress like a cleaning lady. I said, You can't come on with your shmata. <laughs> I, I didn't say cleaning lady, I just said that some of the uh, shirts you wear looks like what we give the housekeeper to use with the glass plus. <laughs> Even though they're five hundred dollars, but I, the tishmat, it's shmat is we used to go, don't throw it away. Give it to the housekeeper; she'll, she'll glass plus with it. Um, anyway, we are back in the studio. We, of course, want to thank up front our collaborators, friends, sponsors, Whites in Luxembourg, the 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 law firm that not only does well, they do good. They're very philanthropic and they're close friends. They help us. They know that people enjoy this and this brings Mashiach energy and they want to be a part of it and authors in the house. Also, a &H Provisions, uh, best glock kosher meats, uh, best hot dogs. Uh, even the Goyim realize this and that's where they get their hot dogs from. Uh, and their website is? Kosherdogs.net and whitesluxe.com or also whitesandlux.com because I was saying it wrong, so they added a website. Yes. Look at Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur's in shock. Arthur, just, just so you know, never listens to this. He, he, his wife, Randy, <laughs> gives him the updates and the reviews. You have two websites. Okay, so we, we on the podcast here, when we had Arthur last time, uh, we spoke about stuttering, and we had never received so many DMs and emails about this, most of them from parents of children that stutter. And uh, Uri, from what's the name of the organization? Schneider Speech. Sh Schneider Sh Schneider Speech. Not an easy thing to say. <laughs> we uh, well, stuttering also like it's a funny word for people who have trouble getting words out. The S is know? a hard. Stutter, yeah, it's like, and it has the double sound. Did and you it, do that on purpose? We didn't do it. Also, it's interesting. In Hebrew, also gimgum. It always every in every language, the word for stuttering has a repetition in. Really, stutter. It's right. Oh my God, I didn't realize that gimgum. But and in, gimgum in Yiddish, easy. it's keketzin. Kekitsin, Kekitsin. Is it? In every language, it has this. Kekitsin. It's a good word. So listen, you are the, I, I mean, I've seen the videos from your, uh, for, uh, about your, your, your work and, uh, and we are here. And the number one thing, I, I was calling it tricks to avoid stuttering. You said it's better to use techniques or uh, what were the other words you used? You can call it anything. I think the important thing is that it shouldn't have like a negative connotation. Like you're, right. you're trying to like slip something by a trick. If you like trick, that's fine. Tools, tools, strategies, strategies. techniques. And I think d different words work for different people. You know, when you make jokes about the Holocaust, you talked about the importance of picking the right words. You don't want right. to trigger the wrong thing. So if you walk into a room and you say, listen, I have a few speech tricks. That doesn't really, right. people could think all kinds of tricks. Like magic, so, yeah. Yeah, so you want to think of things that, that work for the person. But the most important thing is, it's funny, you do an episode on stuttering, and people start talking. That's right. <laughs> it's pretty one ironic. One of the stickers you gave me, he was very sweet. He, one of the things I love most is backstage when people s send gifts. And uh, people, people send you like a, so homemade cookies, brownies, uh, a toy or whatever, something from their company. And he sent uh, stickers. And one of the stickers you had was speak. Talk more. Talk more. Fear less. Fear less. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah, that would be amazing. Take the batch. Take There's two. a whole set. Yeah. Oh, they're all different? They're yeah, all yeah. different. So that's, uh, it's true. And I was watching the, the videos you had of people who were like, the one guy that would, said he had to speak in class and instead of speaking, he jammed a pencil into his hand. There's a crazy thing about that. That's a documentary. It was on PBS. Yeah. And uh, my dad filmed his work. My dad is Dr. Phil Schneider. He's in Riverdale. He continues to do his work. He's amazing and should be well to 120. He taught at Queens College. He had an office in Great Neck. We drove past her on the way to the show in Huntington. I took him to the show on Sunday night. Yeah. And um, 
It's unbelievable because what he did is he realized, stop focusing on the stuttering. It's not about treating stuttering. It's about treating people and helping people talk more. People who stutter want to talk. It's not that they want to stop stuttering. They think they want to stop stuttering. But what they really want to do is they want to stop stuttering, go quiet. But silence is the most dangerous thing. Nobody wants their kid to go dark. Nobody wants their kid to to be quiet. And so many people who stutter, you don't hear them stutter. And it's interesting when you were having the conversation, some of the ways people cope is just by ducking and dodging and staying safe, staying away from a certain word, lest I be heard or exposed. And so the danger of stuttering is less about the words and sounds getting stuck. It's more about not saying what you really want to say. So, you know, it's really great to be here again. First of all, and thank you for including You're welcome me. whenever you want. And thank you for including me in this group. Uh, and thank you for wearing what you're wearing. Those of you who are only listening to this, you have to just go to YouTube just to see the outfit Arthur hit us with today. <laughs> so I also spent a little bit of time, uh, you know, watching uh, some of the documentaries uh, you and your dad did. And they were very meaningful to me uh, because... It opened my eyes to certain things that I was not even aware of. And um, the biggest thing, because I had formalized training, um, I didn't, you know, overcome, and I don't think you never, you never formally overcome stuttering. You're always on edge about it. But unlike you, I went to Long Island Jewish uh, speech and hearing for many, many years. Um, just mentioning his name. I don't know if he'll ever hear this. Uh, a guy by the name of uh, Arthur Jacobs, Dr. Arthur Jacobs. And I actually spoke to him about a year or two ago. And um, we worked extensively on uh, techniques. And, you know, if we have a chance to talk about that today, you know, we should. Uh, because it's a lot different from the takeaway that I got from you and your dad. Hmm. Um, and you and your dad's techniques and um, uh, the way you approached this was very, very interesting in giving the stutterers, giving the community and people that are, uh, um, I don't want to even call it afflicted because it's just a- Facing a, a, this adversity, challenged facing, with this challenged peckle. with this adversity, um, a, a way to get comfortable with it, without necessarily overcoming it, learning how to be comfortable with your stutter and not necessarily finding a trick. Sure, there are ways and techniques and there are uh, things that children and adults uh, who, who are uh, overcome with this you know, can learn, but the biggest thing would be that teaching people to live with this effectively, which I just want to, again, go on record, you know, as saying that I'm a much greater advocate for speech therapy, because I think that in a lot of situations, children, of course, um, if they're living in a community where they feel safe, finally, amongst people that are similar to them, and they're never going out and challenging themselves and going to high schools and colleges and starting to work, you know, the worst thing, and I watched the documentaries, I, I did, Perry Ellen, I formally apologize to you for jumping down your throat in the middle of the night, for sending, <laughs> me, for sending me the Schneider homework, you know, in the middle of the night. Uh, we're talking about videos that you're, you're my yeah. father and I produced two yeah. documentaries. Yeah. One is called great. Transcending Stuttering yeah. and one's called The Flow, uh, Going, the guide, with the flow. Going with the Flow, The Guide yeah. to Transcending. And, and, and they, it's real people. It's the story of real people and, growing up. And what they... Been through. They weren't... I thought I was going to hear about techniques and not at all. It was all about the psychological impact of these children and learning how to overcome that and get through it. And look at you and I, Modi. Yeah. And I don't know who in your family was a stutterer, or maybe your father was just a renowned speech therapist and realized this. But I'm telling you, Modi yes. and Uri, we need to light this up. And I think, Modi, that you are the perfect touchstone for this. And I think I am as well. For cause sure. Because I'll, I'll support it. 
I'll support it financially. I want to blow this up. Okay. I want to blow it up. I think that we have to give back besides all the incredible uh, Jewish, um, uh, Jewish charities that we're involved in. Um, this is something that's near and dear to our hearts, and we have thrived in life uh, because of it and despite it. And I think that we owe a great deal to our afflictions that we've managed to not overcome, but live with yeah. and become the top of our professions. And I think that See? we need to do something. That's Mashiach energy. That's Mashiach energy. Mashiach when, energy. The Rebbe said when, to, when Jews meet, the first thing they should do is discuss how to help somebody else. We got to come back to my it. dad. Mashiach energy, when the Rebbe had a second stroke. Yes. They needed a speech therapist. No. Yes. Yeah, I mean. They needed a speech I, therapist. I saw that in. My father was not a religious man. I read that in was he, he didn't know who this Rabbi Schneerson was. Oh, my The Lubavitcher God. Rebbe, which we've heard so much from you on the podcast and, and everywhere. Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson Chabad. Wow. So this person had a command of what, more than 15 languages. Yeah. He had a stroke and suddenly he couldn't communicate. Yep. Not only was he a leader in this sect, he was running a global enterprise yeah. and all kinds of decisions, financial decisions, interpersonal. So the, the two people that were helping the Rebbe, take care of the Rebbe, they called my father and they said, uh, Dr. Schneider, you, know, you, you could do a much better Brooklyn Lubavitch phone call. Hi, this is, you know, this is Goldberg. This is Goldberg, you know, yeah. we need you to, you're, you're, gonna come, you're gonna come treat this rabbi. My dad says, I don't do house calls. Uh, I don't know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also not the person that is the best person to help someone after a stroke. I'm happy to help connect you. And uh, they wouldn't take no for an answer. They said, no, we'll send you a car. He says, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm not, the, I'm not that guy. Wow. So, so, what so that night, so yeah. that night he, goes, he, goes, he goes to sleep and he, turned, he rebuffed them. He said, no. And my, he speaks it over with my mother. He speaks it over <laughs> with my mother. That was Yiddish. <laughs> Go ahead. That was basically Yiddish with English words. It was, it was yeah. So he has a discussion with my mom. He doesn't make the final decision. He knows to run it by the boss. And my wife and my mother, my mother says, I think you should help this man. I think you should help him. Wow. Now, what my father does next is what really blew me away. You got to go all in. And this comes to stuttering too. Like if you're hedging what you want to say, you're going to stumble and stutter whether you stutter or not. And if you stutter, even more so. My father didn't hedge and say, well, what time can you meet my schedule? Can you do... My father said, when is he most alert? So anyone knows the Lubavitcher Rebbe was always most alert at four in the morning. Yep. <gasps> so my yep. father said, send the car at yep. 3 a.m. Oh yep. my God. So I was, I was 12 and a half and uh, my father was treating the Rebbe. I didn't get to see the Rebbe, but my dad had private time with the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Wow. And he wasn't speaking. And I learned how to put on tefillin downstairs in 770 with Rabbi Groner and Rabbi Krinsky. Wow. <laughs> no, that, that you didn't tell me till now? Wanted to leave something good. We got wow. lots more. I yeah. did not see that happening. Did you so follow? So my father, yes. my father has some tell incredible the stories. stories. First of Everybody, all. Everybody, every rabbi that the rabbi, every rabbi that the rabbi, every rabbi that ever helped the rabbi has such insane stories. Yeah. So my father, and it also ties into everything, his ethos and his way and with stuttering, he came in and he said that the two rabbis were holding him, like locking his arms because they saw he didn't know exactly how to interact. What was the conduct? What was the culture? What were the codes? So they walk my father in holding him tight and he sees a person who on the one hand should be in a hospital, maybe, but they've set up this room so beautifully with such respect and such dignity. And instead of having like a robe with the backside open, satin robe, with like buttons so they could access, get a line in, get a line out, but everything very dignified, very. So that was the first lesson my father takes, was like how we should treat people who are older and people who might be not well. Yeah. And the way people are treated in hospitals, it like strips people of all their dignity. Horrible. He comes in and the Rebbe's not speaking and they said, do you think he'll be able to give a, a, a Febrengen? Do you think he'll be able to, my father said, well, what's a Febrengen? <laughs> so he says, well, it's, it's kind of like where there's thousands of these Hasidim hanging on every word yes. and without any notes, he's pulling up sources seamlessly for hours on end, speaking mellifluously. And my father's looking at a man who just had his second stroke. 
Wow. And he's not speaking. And he's being brought in to ask, can he also make decisions? So my father says, I don't know, but let's try. I don't know, but let's try. It's also a big lesson. I don't know, but if you don't ask, the answer is always no. So you got to try. So my father, um, basically the first question that was, there were letters being sent to the Lubavitcher Rebbe to ask him to make big decisions. They wanted to know, could he understand? Did he have the ability to understand? And could he give answers that were reliable? And what would be the code? So my father said, we're going to take three people. One is a Yiddish speaker. One is an English speaker. One is a Hebrew speaker. My father took the English. They presented the question in both ways, you know, a yes or no. And they asked him a question about a financial decision that came in from somewhere in Australia. And my father said, just look at the Rebbe. And then we'll come together and compare our notes, what the answer is. And so they asked him six ways. They compared their notes. They all got the exact same answer just by looking at his eyes. Wow. The second question was a young woman who was set up in an arranged marriage to marry a divorcee. And he was older and she wasn't, she wasn't in for this. And she wanted to know if she, could, if she could cancel this arranged marriage. And they all agreed that the Rebbe's answer was yes. There was full agreement. And the point was that beyond words, you look at the face, you look into the eyes, you look into the soul, and you see, you see what's there. And so my father was able thank God, to help Chabad Lubavitch see the Rebbe knew what was happening. He was able to be dependable in his decisions. My father wasn't able to help him get to the point where he could give a Fabrengan again, right. but uh, he had many sacred encounters. That was his first encounter with a person of the magnitude of the Rebbe. Sacred encounters. That's what my There's dad your calls title of, there you go. of the podcast. My dad sacred says every phone call that we get and every meeting that we have should be a sacred encounter. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. I so that's the that. prelude. Yes. When the Rebbe had, to, had a stroke, they, they, they changed 770. Yeah. They put him in the back, but everything was always with dignity and beautiful. And, uh, and you felt his energy still. Yeah. The other wow. thing that he did, the Rebbe, they built, as you said, they turned it around. They built a balcony. Yeah. They broke a wall from his study, which was the room they were taking care of him into the study hall so that he could not have to go downstairs and around. There was no tunnel then, but just go out the balcony and, and see the Hasidim. And uh, they brought him out and he, no one knew if he'd be able to speak. And he's standing there and nothing's coming out. And for the community, it was very painful because they hadn't seen him. They so much yeah. wanted to see and to hear. It's, it's, it's a painful, traumatic experience for the community. But my father takes away is that you see his attendants trying to pull him back, but you see his determination. And he stood there for a very long time. And my father feels that in standing there, he was also transmitting a message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beyond yeah. words. Yeah. Wow. 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 I didn't see that coming through. There you go. Thank you. Wow. But what Arthur said, I think is really important, which is it shouldn't be misunderstood that the work with people who stutter should be just psychological and emotional. We need to integrate the two sides. So we created a framework called Transcending Stuttering Framework. There's four parts. One is self-knowledge, to know what is stuttering, who are you, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what are your interests, what are your talents. Understanding that, so many people that stutter don't know what makes me stutter more, what makes me stutter less. I'm so, I'm so busy shadow boxing with this thing, but I don't know what it's all about and I don't know what I'm all about. What do I really want? The second thing is self-adjustment, which is the techniques, the training, just like you would train for golf or for tennis. There are things you can learn. It's like shifting gears. When you shift gears, the engine performs differently. So there are things you can learn mechanically and drill. The third thing is that self-acceptance, looking in the mirror and seeing you're worth it. You're perfectly imperfect, just like every other human being. That's the way we're made. And love yourself, love yourself up, because if you love yourself, other people will come to love you too. And then the fourth is self-advocacy, which is what we're doing here and what you talked about, Arthur and Modi, for having this conversation, talking about it, putting it out there, whether you're a young person or a parent, telling the teacher what's up, telling people in your family, in your circle, how you want them to respond when it comes up. So they'll be more comfortable, you'll be more comfortable, and you can have real connections. So those and, are the four pieces. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's an interesting you know, thing, breaking it down that way is very, very helpful um, in the community, which I never did, you know, and I, I mentioned off camera, or maybe we were on camera before, that 
I watched one of the podcasts or uh, one of the documentaries uh, that you and your dad did. You know, it was very emotional to me because, you know, I haven't studied this in a very long time. I had extensive therapy. And when um, I saw how painful it was for some of these younger children um, that you highlighted in the um, documentaries, and I watched all of them, and I, uh, I appreciate the diversity of children um, and young adults that you presented. You presented them from, you know, from it looked like observant to inner city youth, and it was good to see that because I have my own views on that and people that can get help and people that aren't getting help. But I really, but what I'm saying to to you is that I never remember having one single example of being ridiculed or criticized, mm. never one. And I was a profound stutterer. So it was very odd to me. Did I block it out? Mm. Did I not remember this? And I could not it. care. Maybe... I don't know. Maybe there was. You just don't don't remember it. Yeah, but I'm a very like sensitive person. Okay. Oh, so I don't know if I was sensitive as a kid. So I called my mother, right? And one thing about my mother and my family, we were like very supportive of each other. And, you know, my, it was my grandmother, and I think <clears throat> I might have said this before. It was my grandmother that took me uh, for speech therapy uh, three times a week, and it wasn't like going across the street or next door. It was. Going from Queens, going from Queens, going to Long Island to pick me up from school, taking me to Long Island Jewish Hospital, waiting for me there, and driving me back to Woodmere. So it was a very special time that we spent together, and she built me up by making me feel like I'm special. I could do anything along the lines of what you and your dad did. And... Any anecdotes you remember with your grandmother? There were endless anecdotes. I mean, I would say to her, and I was almost, I was in college at this point, uh, at the end of high school, going into college, and I, I would say to my grandmother, I, I'm not afraid to admit, you know, that I felt I was ordinary. Um, I, I felt that way. I, I, I didn't feel I was extraordinary. I felt like I was a regular kid. You know what? You know, ordinary kid. And she's telling me how extraordinary I am and how I could do anything and I'm going to be something great. And I would say to her, you know, Grandma, that's so great, but I don't get it. You know, I'm just very ordinary and I have a speech, uh, a speech impediment. You know, how do I get there? She says, you'll see. And I don't know if she ever saw, you know, my successes, whatever those are. Uh, but, you know, she gets the credit. So when I called my mother, I said to her, I said, Mom, you know, what's the story? Do you have any stories of me coming home, you know, talking about being shattered? And, and she said, no, you know, you, I guess, lived in a, a great environment at a time when you know, you had teachers that also supported this and you never let it happen to you that, you know, and I, because I've listened to old recordings of myself, you know, and I said to myself, it's not like I'm speaking normally. I am clearly have a real problem, which is why I went for therapy for many years yeah. and um, I needed to get the help, but I never... I never felt that. So it was very emotional that children were feeling that way. And I said to myself, I got to do something about this. It's not just getting them uh, the physical help and treatment. And because I guess sometimes, and some of the comments that we got was, oh, Luxembourg's wrong, you know. Uh, you can't be in a room alone and not stutter. 
I said. Yeah, people that people. It jumped on me. Jumped on you for that, yeah. And I, I'm not saying I'm a doctor. I, I'm saying for Stutterers me. are like Jews, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, they, they don't yeah. have one opinion. You state opinion, you're going to have somebody that's going to Everybody's got a you. different stuttering thing. And that's fine. Is- but I said for me, but I said for me, you know, um, I'm in a room alone. I'll tell you what my father said. Well, you, I can never, when you and I first began hanging out, I never would have thought you were a stutterer. Well, he doesn't stutter like stuttering John. He doesn't stutter, but he doesn't stutter at all. We, we've had dinners together. I think maybe months later, he tells me he's a stutterer because he saw me stuttering. And then- um, But I never saw you that way either because I just saw you as the funniest guy. No, but you, I get caught. At a dinner, I'll get caught. I just I'm trying thought, to get something out. I just thought that was one of your affectations. I never viewed that. That's good to know. I never viewed that as, and when you're on stage, unless you're really blocking, and I know- that's a stutterer. I know that's a stutterer. Yeah. Um, I never thought we were together or at Dina's house and other places a lot. Yeah. You were on stage a lot. You don't was, stutter on stage. It's um, So it's very funny you say that. I stutter on stage when it's new material and I'm not sure what words to use. Right, you've at, said that. At the, show in, at the show in Huntington, Long Island at the Paramount, I was about to do a new bit and I was exhausted. And I said, this is not going to come out cute. It was a bit about, because we're in Long Island and it's all of the the communities, Roslyn and Great Neck and this point and that point. And, <laughs> and, 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 yeah, you know, all the rich Jewish West neighborhoods. Hampton. And um, and what's funny now, and we also had the guy from the diner right, with right. the Peter. posters yeah. all over the, the hostage posters all over the diner. Golden Globe. Is, the Golden Globe Diner. And I wanted to, to say something along the lines like, I love how all the Jews are on missions now. They all go on missions to Israel. They go on these programs to Israel and they're all trying to up, outdo each other. My mission staying at, uh, we're staying at the King David. I'm at, this, I'm at the Citadel. We're going to get uh, t-shirts and the dog tag, but ours is in gold. <laughs> we're going to barbecue with the soldiers right uh, on the border. We're going to barbecue in the tunnel. <laughs> I'm actually going to make my daughter's bat mitzvah in the tunnel right. with glot uh, kosher tunnels. Right. It's, it's, um, it's, uh, the, the and old here's thing. Modi. And I was going to do this bit on stage, but I said, I am too tired to get all of these words out. In my mind, I had it. I knew what the taglines were. It's the, it, the barbecue in the tunnel, the gold instead of the silver dog tag, and which <laughs> hotel they're staying in. And then you can throw in like lamb chops and you know things that the Jews know. But I was like, wow, because I, I, I was on, I was, I was were, in fifth gear. You were a... Beast. Beast. So I, I said, really, Modi, you are way too tired to start doing a new bit now. And the words are going to come out. I remember one time when I did this, the bit on those stupid presidents of the schools. And I, and that was just, it was that day. And I sent it and I stuttered through the entire <laughs> bit. Uh, you told me to watch it. <laughs> I sent it to Arthur right away. I go, just in case you think I don't stutter here, I couldn't get one word out, but it was funny. I stayed with it. But <laughs> I couldn't get the word genocide out, <laughs> the, 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 the killing. Uh, it, it was a mess, <laughs> but it, it was a funny bit. It got a lot of hits. Um, but okay. So, so Tachlis. But what's interesting, tachlis. what's interesting, yes. this is Tachlis. And then when you were... <clears throat> Arthur, and you had the same conversation in the other interview, where Arthur's saying to you, I didn't know you stuttered. And you're saying, no, no, I, I do, I'm telling you, I was stuttering. And so you had this narrative of yourself stuttering, and a lot of it was probably not even visible on the outside. It was how you were maneuvering on the inside. Mm-hmm. And I think that we need to acknowledge that that is a big schwitz. That's a lot of energy that people consume. I mean, what both of you do is hard enough to be a class act in your craft. But then to have to say, okay, it's like a taboo game. We got like many words we're gonna not say. We have many potholes we have to navigate. It's exhausting. And the experience in here doesn't match what's out here. So parents sometimes don't recognize what the kid's going through. Oh, no, no, you're fine. Oh. Because they don't stutter like Stuttering John or someone else they saw on a movie that's st- 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 stuttering and blinking and moving right. and, and getting and wrestling with every word. People, oh, that's stuttering. You don't stutter. And then people say, no, no, like, I need to prove to you. I'm telling you, I know, like you said, the words are lined up, the bits lined up. It's all, it's actually awesome. Yeah. I don't trust it's gonna come, nix it. But what we could never allow, guys, 
and lady. What we can never allow is a situation where one of the people you had on, a very meaningful man, um, and we watched him get older in life, and he seemed to be a lot more fluent than he ever was. And he said it was a scene in like a supermarket yeah. uh, where he actually had to pretend to be retarded oh my in, God. in order to, I was hysterical. I mean, I, I can't even talk about it now because it was so emotional that it was so, he was in such a bad shape and had to get out of that situation that it was better for him to be retarded than for him to go through whatever he was going through at that moment. We can never allow for there not to be a better heightened awareness. We need to take billboards out to address this, okay? To address this in a meaningful way, using some of the things that you're using, working with you and your dad, working with you, Modi. We can never allow people to think that a person that's presented as a stutterer is retarded or has Tourette's. Not that these are not diseases that also need to be highlighted um, and need to be overcome and need to be worked on. But what we're working on now is stuttering and we need to make sure that people don't confuse a stutterer with other diseases that just don't correlate to to stuttering. I think it's also giving people the power of their voice. Like imagine what the world would miss mm. if stutterers don't speak. We're silent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what a great, by the way. Whoa. <laughs> uh, whoa. Right. Yes. Like you don't even have to <clears throat> close the show right now. No, I have one more thing. No, but I'm saying, Perry, just imagine what the world would miss if stutterers didn't speak. Mm -hmm. And there were some very famous stutterers. You'd be missing a sponsor for the podcast. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, lawyers. Are Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe was a stutterer. Uh, uh, there was a whole... Jack Welch. Uh, Jack Welch. I mean... He, and he didn't have time for speech therapy. That was his attitude. He said, I just don't give a... And he just went forward. Um, John Stossel. John Stossel. I've, I've, sure. We've had him. Hello. Yeah. Uh, John Stossel. Was he ever on the podcast? No. We've, wow. had, had, we've had him on the Seller podcast, the seller but podcast. we should have him on okay. this. Uh, Absolutely. John Stossel. I mean, we could really... Stutterers are everywhere. You do the podcast and they all come out of the woods. So, but how do we help the stutterers? Wait, I just, we wanna say, I just want to say one thing quickly. After... Um, the show in Huntington. Yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Somebody came and said, this guy's in the back and maybe Leo texted me and he spoke to Leo and this and that. And so I was in, I was talking to Uli and Dr. Schneider and I started. Dr. Phil. He's the original Dr. 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 Phil. Phil. The, the, the goat of um, speech therapy, apparently. And I said, you know, this is really interesting for me because my oldest and best friend from growing up is a stutterer. And so she was always like my little sister and she had a very bad stutter. Very good stutter. Very or strong the, stutter. Or a very good See, stutter. See, that's where the language matters. There you go. The, the minute, specificity so the talk, of language. The talk, exactly. The specificity, the precision. Because if a parent says to the kid, oh, did you have a, did you have a good talking day? Mm. Yeah. Is that kid oh. going to want to take a risk tomorrow? Wow. So messaging to kids, good, bad, the sooner we can get to descriptive language, you could say one to 10. 10 is really fluid. Oh, those are the stutterers. Oh, wow. Winston Samuel Churchill, Jack Joe Roberts, Ed Sheeran. Samuel Joe L. Jackson. Joe Biden, who, who we Joe spoke Biden about we that. spoke about. Samuel yeah. L. Jackson is very Moses. interesting. Moses. Moses should have been. You know. <laughs> there you go. Ed uh, Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Yes, Joe, yes. Wow. But, uh, but I'm not sure about it. Moses? How do they know Moses? Moses I thought you were stutter. making that up. I thought no, you were being no. funny. Moses oh, I could hold, Moses. I have a whole bit on that. What do you mean? Moses, when, when he was, you know, <laughs> going to the coals... Right. Instead of they di redirected him, and he, his first thing when God said to him, "You're going to be the leader. You got to go, you know, lead the Jewish people and take them out of Egypt." And he said, "Me, I, I tell really me, speak. I can't. I have a speech. I'm hard of speech. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah it's in the directly right in the, there in Exodus, directly in the well, book. I have to admit oh, that 
I, that you've I, never I, read the Torah, is what you have to admit. Never, you've never read the Torah. Uh, but and I that's actually, why our own, and that's why our own, his brother, you know, became so important to him because he was sort of his spokesperson. Wow. Yeah. So you're Hi. Gonna tell? Welcome <laughs> to being Jewish. Yes, there's a Torah. Really, Harry. Feel, free, feel free to read uh, the Torah. It's really I interesting. I can't read the Torah right now because I'm reading the five people you meet in heaven. But wait, let me... <laughs> okay, it's 100 you pages. my dad and you talked about... So I meet Dr. Phil yeah. and... OG Phil, yeah. OG. And I'm telling him, my best friend growing up had a very strong stutter. So I really grew up and she used to go to camp for this. And Dr. Phil says to me, um, what's her name? And I'm, you know, I'm like, you know, it's so crazy after the show and everybody's right. talking and I'm like, you know, I didn't really have like a clear sense of like who you, you were busy talking were. to Peter. It was like unclear. That's what right. We, were we had just there. come from the hostage diner. It was like a whole thing. And, um, but your dad's so intense and. Like we were, like it was like a very like focused conversation. Like I was almost getting like almost pulled like a sacred out. encounter. Almost like a sacred, sacred encounter. Good encounter. callback. Good wow. callback. Good callback. Um, and he said, "What was her name?" And I said, "I told him her name." And he said, um, "She was my student." Yeah, it's great. That's and then and, we made, he said, "And volunteered we make on the her film. video." Oh, and which so, one? Which one was? was she helped catalog some of the clips to make those documentary yeah. films. Erica but, did? Yeah, I, that's what my father remembers. Yeah. We have to check. Wow. But you said, yeah, my dad said, can I send her a video message? So And so I sent it to her from the show, and she was over the moon. She was in California, and she loves you. And so she, I mean, that was just so amazing. I Wait, can we, can we, so I, I don't want to lose track here. I, how are we helping people? How, how we're not going to figure it out right this second. No, but we have to start somewhere where someone can go get help. So uh, we're going to, just for us, when the DMs start coming in from this, where can my kid get help? Where can, what can I do with so my we child? Can set up, we can set up a page that you can send people that'll have some very practical do's and don'ts, practical things to do. It doesn't help anybody to tell them, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Oh, it's, so, it's so individualized, the stuttering. But there are certain definite no-nos. So telling a kid, whoa, 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 hold up, take a deep breath, relax, think about what you want to say. Those are all messages that are going to hold a kid back. Okay, let me start that's, off that's this way. your technique. But let me start off this way. Yeah. Let me say this, okay? <clears throat> we'll talk offline. I'm committing a certain amount of money to people, to scholarships, that people that come into your organization that don't have the means or insurance to pay, I'm committing a certain amount of money right now wow. to champion uh, those children for your organization and us to do something. And I'm hoping Modi will do some kind of a show uh, on a grand level that will raise a ton of money and you'll hopefully contribute, you know, money towards that also where we can put together a scholarship fund mm -hmm. for these, uh, you know, children and young adults and people that can't afford and have no opportunity to get any help, I'm talking about both kinds of help, the actual training, and I'm talking about the emotional, the emotional help that gets a person through the day so that they don't feel. Menuchas hanefesh, guys, mm. is everything, okay? I pray for it, you know, just, yeah. just lightness of the heart, you know, that we, we have a day that we just don't, aren't overcome with, with difficulties and these children, I think, from what I've seen, you know, in the last week since you asked me to come on and I've actually studied some of this, you know, is overwhelming to me. And so I'm willing, whether you do a show or not, I'm willing, because I'm looking for something and I think I, think I want to ride that, I want to ride that with you, with you and your dad. So Partner. I think it's a great, uh, opportunity that we've joined, you know, today. By the way, just, just I know we're ten fifty. Uh, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say this. It's a, it was a funny thing. Yeah. So you know, I never like going to a courtroom unprepared. So like, I'm going to meet this uh, famous uh, speech guy. You know, you know Phil Schneider. So I'm, you know yelling at my people in the office, get me everything on Phil Schneider, you know, get me, get me volumes, you know, and they're sending me things. And, you know, my son-in-law, 
uh, my son-in-law uh, shows me that uh, in WhatsApp, uh, there's a new like AI, uh, right? So he says, watch this, you know, you could ask it anything. So I, I said, send me stuff on Phil Schneider, you know, on Phil Schneider. Anyway, sends me stuff. They send me these documentaries, okay, whatever. It's these documentaries. I'm laying in bed like, you know, two o'clock in the morning and I'm watching one of these documentaries. It's on UFOs, you know, it's on, it's on, it's on UFOs. I'm saying to myself, the guy was also a, a UFO, <laughs> like a famous UFO doctor, your Dr. Dad, Phil your, Schneider. Your dad's a UFO guy. Right. Uh, so if you go to look up the YouTube video, <laughs> yeah. it's like tens yeah. of thousands yeah. of hits and comments. Yeah. Oh, it's the wrong Dr. Phil. Yeah. There's a guy, uh, Phil yeah. Schneider, who yeah. was a, a conspiracy theorist who disappeared. Right. And so when you I'm look him up. My, ah, I'm calling my people. <laughs> I'm yelling at them. In there. You sent me the wrong Schneider. I go, you crazy. It's spelled <laughs> this way, not that way. <laughs> anyway, and then, and then uh, I realize it's that AI thing, <clears throat> right? The dangers of AI, yeah. right? right? People have to talk. The dangers of AI. And so anyway, your dad's got to make sure that, you know, you know, he comes up first. Absolutely. That's great. How can people reach out to your organization and find out about you? What are the websites? I mean, the easy Instagram? thing is schneiderspeech.com. That's the private practice. Spell it out. S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R-S-P-E-E-C-H.com. Um, that's our private practice. And we have offices in person and we also have teletherapy. We also have, we've always wanted to make sure that we don't just help people who have resources and have means. And when we don't have partners to provide scholarships, we created something called transcendingx.com, uh, T-R-A-N-S-C-E-N-D-I-N-G-X.com. Created a podcast called Transcending Stuttering. And we have a community around that, a private online community for people who stutter, a private online community for therapists who want to learn how to do this life-changing work. And so in this way, we're reaching a global audience of people and transcending financial barriers, geographic barriers, all barriers. Because in the end, when human beings learn how to be their best and they can bring out the best in other people, I think the key from, from Arthur's story is his grandmother put a belief in his head of Mashiach energy. Mashiach is believing that the world to come will come. Yeah. Even though I don't see it right now, I look around, the world is upside down. It's the furthest thing from, but I have a belief that it can happen. Yes. And when you put that belief into a person, that's the agent of change. And I think as much as Arthur talks about the therapist and not to downplay the therapist, when my father and I interview people like yourselves, it might be interesting to hear from you, Modi. What was the change? What was the game change? What drove you to be able to transcend stuttering or however you think about it? Most people say it was a certain person, a certain adult, a certain caring, it might be a teacher, a family member, a parent. So I think that's the key is really highlighting if parents are asking what they can do, if teachers are asking, listen to what changes a kid's life. It's putting belief that they could be somebody, that they could do something that they doubt they could do. What was the change for you? What was the My, biggest I, ingredient? I, from watching your documentary, I remember when I realized I was a stutterer, when it was, I think, first or second grade, and I... I was asked, we, we had to say something and I said it and uh, the teacher said, wow, that came out perfect. Mm. So I go, are you saying everything else I've been saying has not come out perfect? And that's when I realized, oh, I have a problem. And my, I don't know what the other thing was. You told me about your dad. I'll tell you a funny thing with your grandmother. And my, I was a horrible student. So at Hofstra University, which is far from the five towns, there was a program that my mother used to drive me to and then wait for me, and it didn't help a thing. It was the effort that she came and she used to drive, we should drive back and forth, and used to, we used to listen to Avram Fried and Yoram Gaon in the, in the tapes, back in the, the tapes. Hey. Yeah, and, um, and uh, it, it didn't help a thing. And um, like, you, like your, your grandmother said, um, he, he, you're special, you're this. I remember, I remember this so clearly. We were in the guidance counselor's office and he's saying to, to my mother, Modi's very, very smart and very, very, she goes, he's not so smart, but he's not an idiot. <laughs> my mother literally said that he's not so smart, but he's not an idiot. <coughs> he doesn't have to be in the remedial class. She wanted to keep me out of the remedial class. I can, and, 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 and I should stay in the regular class. So I would have loved that other class. Instead of, um, <laughs> I swear to God, my mother, you know my mother, she is, <laughs> my mother's zero editing, nothing, just comes right out. Um, but uh, but um, 
a big change in my life besides learning my my techniques alone was taking voice lessons. Mm. Was when I was taking voice lessons and they showed me how to put everything up front, take it out from back here and put it all in the facial mask. And then, um, you know, Cause that sings. was a big, yeah. that was a big, big uh, difference in my speech. So if I can catch that breath before I go and then move it to the front rather than back here, he he! Instead of hey, it's a it's a big big difference in my. That do you makes, do that while you're speaking in the yeah, podcast? Yeah 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 yeah. You're thinking about your tonal oh, focus. Yeah, especially if I'm about to go into a bit, I grab the air and then and then he, bring the bit out like that in the front voice. Do you I ever forget, let I'm that an on? hour and ten minutes, not yelling but loud on stage. You can't. You, otherwise, you'd have no voice. Do you ever let that down? <clears throat> like let that. Like just put, let it go. What do you Not mean? focus on that. Like when you're at home having an intimate conversation, are you also doing that? No. No. Because you're at home. That's it's for performance. A, yeah, it's a performance. I yeah. think for kids, when parents start reminding their kids, remember, do your voice thing, do your breathing thing. Yeah. That's not where a kid should be so self-conscious. Like, tremendous respect to Arthur's fit every time, right? But I imagine, Arthur, there are times you put on pajamas. And I'm sure they're lovely too. I'm sure they're gorgeous. I'm sure they they're must be still stunding. And stunning, and his name analogy, is everywhere. Yeah, they're like, Arthur. Yeah. They're like <laughs> Julian Schnabel. And on the back it says "Schluff gesunde hate." <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I don't want to disappoint anybody, but I sleep in my underwear. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Okay, well, that's okay. even better. By the way, very nice underwear. But <laughs> sure, I don't even want to start visioning that. But, <laughs> but my father's line is: nobody should feel they have to dress in formal attire and talk in a formal, controlled way all the time. Right. And, so and we have that, to tell kids they can just be themselves yeah. and equip them with the ability to dress up when they want to, to have that new gear in their, in their transmission, that they can yeah. kick it into that gear when and where they want to. Because I think that, and the takeaway from the, the, the documentaries were that kids felt that by always being on in that way, they lost their voice. It wasn't them. And there was uh, a very interesting piece where um, your dad asked um, a young child to take breaths between, you know, each. And they, you know, asked him, well, and the, the child was much more fluent when he would concentrate very hard on taking breaths. And then your father asked them, how difficult was that on a scale of one to 10? And this was a very young, astute child and said, you know, that was like an eight. And then he says, just talk now. He says, which way do you feel better? Which way? Which and way do you he prefer? Said, and he said, and the other way was he was painfully blocking and stuttering and trying to get through just a couple of words and it looked like this was the most painful experience you would ever go through as a child. And when your father says, which was easier for you? He said, the other way where I'm blocking on every word and stuttering because it's a natural, this is how I am. And yeah, I could be more fluent, but it takes enormous effort, you know? And I'm also, um, you know, I'm always on. Yeah. You know, I am never without being aware of a word that I might block on. And there have been a number of them in this hour where I just substituted or canceled. Well, or whenever I speak to you, whenever you ask you a question, you always do this thing with your face. You go, and then you answer. That you may always, not always be, but there are different things you're that like, I've... I don't know if that's how you should do it, Modi. Right. Like it'd be yeah. like, yeah. But that might just be and my that's a big pause. Yeah. Yeah. But where, I don't think that that's that pause. Like, look, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, blah, 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 right yeah. away. Yeah. There have been a lot of things that I've adapted over the years that have helped me. Um, as I said, I had extensive training um, and it was using, you know, a lot of different methods. And I didn't, you know, the interesting thing is, was I didn't learn any of those methods from your dad. You know, your dad really focused on the emotional 
relationships and emotional and and you know I wanted to I thought we were going to get into that today you know I'll say one word about it is that the techniques and the tools are not rocket science. Yeah. That's, you don't, that's, need, you don't need a documentary that's, on that. That's, that's right. You can give me that's practically right. any person in the room. I can help them get their words out like this. The question is the magic. Is how do you bring it to life? Yeah. How do you make it a new, yeah. comfortable skin? To be comfortable in your own skin and to be able to do this easy but I in say, real life. But I want to say with this therapist, Arthur Jacobs, um, who's now a much older man, I did this, you know, 40 years ago. <laughs> um, we used to go across the street to the mall, going to the store. With you? That was one of the, t- the, 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 the yes. teachings? Mm. We wow. physically went to those difficult places that the phone, we started off with the phone, call the airlines. And we had all this videotaped and uh, tape recorded how I sounded when we first began, how I sounded two years later, how I send, sounded four years later. And then we would go across the street, go into a restaurant, order something. You know, where you, he, you would hear on the videos a young girl who was panicked, she would be in a bathroom. Uh, she, would, she would go to the bathroom deliberately uh, at a time when she would have to order to avoid having to order. And she'd stay in the bathroom long enough so that she wouldn't have to, so that she'd make sure her mother ordered. Wow. I need to, we need to challenge that. And we need to, and it exists, and it's alive, and it's well. And I'm sorry to, you know, an organization that I may have been critical of, you know, on the last, uh, on the last podcast, you know, where they seem to have, really been focused on giving children a community and a voice and a place. You know, I was overly critical of that where I said, no, give them therapy, get them on the streets, get them out there because one day they're not going to be in this beautiful community. I apologize for that because I see from the, the things that I learned from you and your dad that, you know, that is equally, if not a lot more important. But I think together, yeah. those things could be very powerful. You gotta feel good, you gotta feel well, then you can speak well, and then you can be best. Yes, be best. Th- thank you, Melania Trump. Um, uh, okay, so all DMs and all, all questions should go directly to Schneider speech spelt with C's and, and I before E's and all kinds of ways that you'll figure it's out. I actually, yeah. I have no idea. Backwards. I, that, that, but we also not, have on Instagram, it, at Schneider speech. I before E was the worst thing ever in, it, in school it, for it, me. Except for all the exceptions. Except right? for the exceptions and then uh, it was oh, a nightmare for me. Um, anyway, so they should all reach out to you directly and talk to you about what they can do for their children and whoever else is in their life that has stuttering. We are so happy that you joined us. Thank you so much for the story about the Rebbe. Wow, did not see that coming. That was really a sacred encounter that we just had today. Arthur, I can't thank you enough for dressing the way you did today. This is just, you killed it. You slayed every, every, (laughs) slayed, (laughs) slayed. Um, Again, thank you again to White, uh, to Whites and Luxembourg for being our partners and collaborators and making this happen. And thanks to A&H Provisions. And thank you all for listening. Um, I am, wow. ModiLife.com. Be the friend that brings the friends to the comedy show. By the time this airs, there'll be shows still available. A matinee. I have a matinee in San Diego. Improv shows at the in Hollywood is is sold out. Then we have uh, Kenny Center sold out. Um, St. Louis. Ladies and gentlemen, St. Louis is going to be an off-the-hook show. We are in, um, help me here, I forgot where I'm going, um, uh, modilive.com. Find a show near you or if show near your friends, send them the link. Be the friend that brings the friends to the comedy show. That is Mashiach Energy, modilive.com. Periel, anything? I am at Periel Ashenbrand on Instagram. and you For can, now. For now. Modi's trying to change my name. Um, and all my upcoming shows and endeavors are on there. Thank you. Anything you want to plug for you? No? 
Okay. Just want to say thank you. My, I think the most you. important thank thing for you. people who stutter is number one to keep talking. Amen. And for the world to listen, we need to learn to listen to each other. Everybody has to learn to listen to other people. And people who stutter just need that chance. Give them a chance to be heard. You're gonna, you're gonna be happy you did. You're gonna hear great things. Great. Thank you all very much.